Hi there, I'm Bunna, and this is my Grid Locked Arc series. The map has been divided into grids that can only be unlocked by completing certain milestones I've set for my character. Grids can be lost if I die and can't retrieve my items, or if I die in a boss fight. The series will end when I've either unlocked all of the grids, or defeated the Alpha Tier boss encounter. Hello there, everybody! Bonna here, and welcome back to Arc Grid Locked, episode 10 now, which is awesome. And as always, this support has been crazy, and I cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, I asked for 40 likes last episode again, and you guys once again crushed it. So uh, sticking with the theme, if you don't mind, let's try to hit 40 likes again this episode, because it has been panning out awesome, and uh, it's really helping to support the channel. So please know that if you press the like button, you're liking the content that I'm gonna keep making for you guys, and the more likes I get, the more content I will produce. Okay? Alright. So I got some plans for this episode, people. Got some things I wanna do. I've been thinking about, like, what route I should take, and what things I should be striving for right now, and I think in this episode, I wanna get at least one beer barrel made. Because I wanna start producing beer. I think that it might be used to power one of the S-plus things, like the, the farmer, or the nanny, or, or one of those. I can't quite remember which one it is. But I think it's used to power one of those, but more importantly, it is used to tame Calicotheriums. And I don't really need a Calicotherium, but it really sucks I came across that level 145 before, and I couldn't tame it. And it was all because I didn't have beer. So I really want to start to get beer making, especially because it takes forever to produce. But uh, resource-wise, all it takes is like berries and water and time. So it's not like, it's not expensive to make, it's just time consuming to make. But I am currently checking for beaver dams because I'd like to get a little bit more smenting paste if I can. Um, the beer barrels take quite a bit. So if we look up the recipe, S plus beer barrel, it takes a hundred smenting paste 80 metal, and 500 wood. So the metal shouldn't be an issue, the wood's definitely not an issue, with Athena, goddess of sex! So that beaver dam spot was empty, and I'm hoping the other one might have some. The one to the, uh, the east, and a little bit to the north, or the, the west, rather, one of those directions. This is the west. Not the east. This way. Y you guys know what I'm talking about, it's this way. I'm gonna go check it. Hopefully it has paste. If it doesn't, it's cool. I'll still come back to base and make the beer barrel, but I would really like some more paste before I bite off a hundred. The other thing I'd like to work towards this episode is getting a domesticated beehive. And you're probably wondering, Bonna, what is a domesticated beehive? Well, in S+, Plus, if you tame a giant bee queen from like a regular beehive, and then you take her and craft her into a domesticated beehive, you can put that in your base, and it'll just passively produce honey as long as you provide it with rare flowers. So, I would really like to start honey production. One, because it's used in kibbles and such. But two, I think I can make some pretty darn good crafted food with honey, if I so wanted to. So, it's definitely something I want to get, like, ticking in the background, because just like the beer, it takes a while to produce, and I want to have it just passively making as I'm doing other stuff. Athena, the war cry is calling! And as always, as I'm out and about doing other stuff, I have been scouting, like, every dino I see looking for a 145+. plus. That right there made my heart skip a second, because I thought that was 145, but it turns out it's just 45. So aside from the beer barrels, and aside from the domesticated beehive, I think I want to try crafting a couple other things that I think I'm gonna need, and I would really like to tame another dino this episode. And as I've said before, I don't think it's worth just taming, like, whatever, unless it's a 145 plus, just like this? What?! Diplodocus?! What? Buddy?! What, what the hell am I gonna use you for? Absolutely nothing, except a brand new chunk, so I'm gonna look up how to tame this thing. Okay, so it looks like its preferred food is regular kibble, which we obviously don't have access to, at least not yet. But we could tame it with mezzoberries. Um, up above it said you could tame it with crops. 
but I'm thinking it means like from Primitive Plus, not from Vanilla. At least that's kind of what I'm getting. So, is there a- it's a knockout tame or it's a passive tame? Is that what I'm reading here? Knockout, and then down here it says passive. Okay, so it says it's able to be both traditionally knockout or passive tamed. So how much would it take to knock the thing out? Quite a lot. That is a lot of trank darts. Holy crap. But to passive tame this thing would take forever. Okay, well I think plan-wise, I'm gonna go ahead and check the beaver dam since I'm so close. And uh, hopefully there's paste. I'll head back to base, make a bunch more trank darts, and come back and try to knock this thing out. Okay, well I feel pretty confident that there's not any beaver dams here. So we're gonna head back to base. I think we're gonna go ahead and make the beer barrel, like we talked about, just so that it's producing in the background. And then we'll make up the trank darts, and a trap, and all the other stuff that we think we're gonna need for this Diplodocus tame. And hopefully it'll still be here when we return. But Diplodocus are pretty tanky, and I don't think anything really messes with them too much, so it should be good. Okay, we made it back to base, and on the way back I decided to get a bunch of fiber, and a bunch of berries, and all that kind of stuff, just because I know I'm gonna need some things in the future, and why not? You know? Fiber's so easy to get, but uh, there's not a whole lot of bushes around here. I mean, I guess it's making a liar of me right now, but typically there's not a bunch of bushes. So if I can pick up a ton of fiber and not have to deal with it later, I would rather do that. Okay, time to make ourselves a beer barrel. So let's look up beer barrel, and where is it crafted? At a crafting station. So we have to make the crafting station, which is something I've wanted to do anyways. So let's get it over with. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same resources as a smithy, like down to the exact material. So... We're just gonna pull it, we gonna make it, and these things are actually super convenient because uh, they're real small, they're like probably a third the size of a smithy if you look at it in comparison. I guess it's like more half, but uh, the pull radius on these things is awesome. So if you've got resources like far away, you can pull really, really far with one of these tables. And uh, they also store a lot of stuff too, so if you need storage, these things are pretty baller. I don't know how close I can tuck this thing. Looks like that's the closest I can get it. Which actually could work, because I can still get to the smithy, I can get to it, and the item collector's not blocked. So, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, so let's open her up. It works just like a smithy does, so nothing really changes there. We're just gonna look up beer barrel. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna pull. Boom! Beer barrel making, people. Look at that. Okay, and to hook this thing up properly, it has to have a water supply. So we're gonna probably just rig it up to the greenhouse water and save ourselves a whole lot of work. But I don't know what all I'm gonna need. I, I think you might need a tap attached to it. But I can't quite remember offhand, so we're just gonna try to like wing it, and then if we need a tap, I'll just come in and make one and then slap it on there. Okay, I think logically speaking, I probably want this attached to like the, the side of my greenhouse here. You know, probably where like these compost bins are, maybe more in the back, just so it's out of the way. So I think you need to place it on a water pipe, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, like right there it's snapping onto that one pipe that I have. So I will probably... Let's, let's bring a pipe straight out. Let's try a, a straight metal pipe. And where's that gonna wanna put it? It wants to put it there. That's gonna look weird. Let's not put it there. Okay, let's make a visibility tool real quick, just so I can see where all the existing piping is, and that might help me out a little bit with figuring out what I wanna do. Okay, let's see. Let's go to show mode, turn everything back on. So there already is a straight pipe coming out here. So will it attach to the end of it? It will. So I mean, that that technically works. Um, it might just look a little wonky. So maybe I should make a stone foundation to put here, and then it at least kind of looks like the barrel's sitting on a foundation, so it's not just floating in the air. You know, it probably doesn't matter, but to me, you know, I need it to be a little bit aesthetically pleasing. I also don't know why I walked back in my base to do this, because I can just pull the resources. I, I really, I just walked in here, opened up the smithy, and then I just pulled the fucking resources. 
There was no need to walk into my base at all. Okay, so now if we snap the barrel on here, is it going to float? Probably a little bit. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that, I'll be honest. So something else I might be able to try is internal piping, which I'm not sure if I learned or not. Um, and they might need to be made in the smithy. Actually, I'm pretty sure they do need to be made in the smithy. So I'm going to make one of those real quick just to see if it solves the problem. And if it doesn't, we're just going to slap that thing down. Okay, so I hadn't learned it, but that's okay because it doesn't cost any points to learn these once you already know the, uh, the initial plumbing and the, like, the wiring and all that stuff. It just comes for free with S+. So I'm going to learn it. And I think it's made in the smithy, like I said. So we will type in internal. I uh, will make one of those puppies. And uh, if you've never used these before, it is a water pipe that you can put inside of a foundation and you never see it. So like if I was to put it here, you can see how it looks like it would replace the foundation. But it actually just gives it like internal plumbing. And so I'm hoping that if I do that back here, I can just snap that barrel right on it and it will take care of the problem, but I'm not sure. I might need to, like, I might need to finagle some things, you know? Maybe I can get it positioned properly. Right there? Is that it? That might be it. Okay, let's place it. Ha-ha! <laughs> okay. So it's sitting there. It's technically not irrigated, but that's okay, because I've got the internal pipe here. All I need to do is put a flexible pipe from my water source to the internal, and then that will feed into the barrel. So I think I actually have, I do, one more flexible pipe. So if I connect that puppy, like, let's see where I want to put it at. Um, okay, well, I got a really weird looking snap point here that definitely filled up that internal piping. So maybe now that I got that snap, if I take these pipes away, I'm hoping that that snap point will remain. And it'll just kind of like shift as we go. And that would simplify things like crazy. So is that going to stay now? Is it still... No, so it lost its irrigation. So that's, that's really wonky. Okay, so I snapped it right there. That's now irrigated. I'm thinking I might need to leave this pipe. But I'm going to try one more time to remove it to see if I can. Nope, definitely can't. Okay. Okay, so we'll connect it back up. That irrigates the whole foundation, and then now I should be able to attach my barrel on there. I realize this is a ton of work for no reason, by the way, but it's just aesthetically pleasing to me to know that I got it sitting out here out back. There we go. And now is it irrigated? It is. So see, it says irrigated now, which means it's going to start to fill up with water, and it'll probably happen all in like one tick. There it is right there. Okay, perfect. So now if we open this guy up, and if you look at the beer recipe, if you put 50 berries, 40 thatch, and then the water that's in there, that will produce beer. So all I gotta do basically is just throw a fuck ton of berries and thatch in here, and it'll just passively produce me beer. And then when I put glass jars in there, it will give me glasses of beer. And then I can use those to tame the Calicotheriums. Luckily, I gathered a shit ton of resources on Athena, goddess of sex. Okay, Mr. Beer Barrel, take all my shit, dude. Start making me some booze. Oh, look at it go. I got a bunch more on her, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling it up, because why not, you know? Berries take a good while to spoil, so it'll just keep making it for me, and I don't even got to think about it. Okay, we got her full. I think it's good to go. I'm going to replace down this compost bin that I moved. If I can... Can I place it there now? So I couldn't place the foundation, but it'll let me... Okay, that makes sense. It would bug me if it was clipping in there, so I'm just gonna leave it out, and I'm just gonna stick with two compost bins and the beetle, because honestly, I think that's plenty anyways. And uh, I actually need to get more thatch in here, so I might steal a little bit here from the barrel we just put, and put it inside here, because uh, it's got plenty of thatch to last it, but these things definitely need more thatch. And I'm going to turn my gamma up for you guys, because I realize it's starting to get really dark on the screen. And before we head back into the base, boop! Going to hide all of those ugly water pipes again. So we are all covered up, and look how clean that looks. Look at that! 
little beer barrel. Just hanging out, making me some booze. I love it. Okay, so now that we got that all taken care of, I think I'm gonna crank out some more narcotics real quick. As many as I can, anyways. And we will start making some more trank darts, so that in the morning here, we can go look for that Diplodocus again, and hopefully trank that motherfucker, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so I got some more narcotics crafting in this pestle, and since it's pitch black outside, um, it's not right now because I have my gamma turned up, but like, if I turn it back down to normal, it's fucking dark. So since it's so dark outside, I think we're gonna look at some of the other things that I wanted to craft. So, one of them was the farmer, which I know I learned before. But let's see, distributes fertilizer to nearby crops, so we definitely want him at some point. Uh, we'll collect fertilizer from nearby compost bins and dung beetles. Can use a tech generator or Kallian soup for fuel. So, let's see, Kallian soup. I don't know how to make that offhand. So let's go out to our cooking pot real fast. And I want to take a look and see what it takes. I think the recipe's in here. So if we look up crafted foods, and right there, Kallian soup. So it's Amar berries, citronelle, measure berries, stimulants, tinto berries. So we technically have everything we need to make it. I just don't know how much citronelle we have. Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so here's our citronelle. We have over 30. So we can make a good bit. That's that's six soups that we can make. And I want to say each of those lasts for like an arc day or something like that. And we would obviously be producing more. So that might be something that we get um, just to automate things more. But I, I might wait just a tad before I uh, actually start using it solely because then I can build up more resources to use. But it takes 250 paste, 100 hide, 100 ingots, 100 pelts. So the paste is a big cost, and the pelts I also don't have yet. Um, usually you get pelts like in the winter zone, or I think if you kill horses, you can get pelts. So if there are low-level horses near me, which I, I think I saw horses there before, I might be able to get the pelt situation figured out. If not, then I'm gonna have to wait to make this guy until I start getting some more winter stuff unlocked. Okay, the other one I wanted to look up was the nanny. So let's see what she takes. 250 paste, 100 hide, 50 hair, and then 100 ingots. And it uses honey for fuel. So that's where that domesticated beehive is really gonna come in handy. I, I thought that honey was a fuel for one of the things. So. I'm still thinking that the plan this episode remains the same. And the other thing that I wanted to make is the animal tender. And it takes clay, a ton of human hair, and wool. So, I don't know that I have access to clay. I would probably have access if I had a grinder. But that's a good ways away. And I need kibble to power this thing. So. I don't think this is going to be happening anytime soon, but it's just something to look forward to in the future. So my metal situation is absolutely terrible. I realized I only got like 21 ingots left, and I've only got 26 raw to smelt, so I'm going to have to get more metal before we can start pumping out trank darts. But I'll probably just do it off camera to save you guys the absolute headache of watching me run to that mountain and back, so I will be right back two hours later. Okay, we made it back to base safely with one load of metal, and I got 163 that trip, so I think that's enough to do what I need to do in terms of making all the trank darts, but if it's not, I'll make another trip. It's not a big deal, it's just kind of like time-consuming, you know? <laughs> Holy shit! I just opened up my grill and realized I put all that meat in there from last episode to cook up. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, so I ended up with 56 tranquilizer darts so far. Um, I've still got more metal smelting, obviously. But I think the best thing for me to do is to go get more metal. Only because that's going to take a while to smelt anyways. So I might as well grab another load. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a lot more than I got. Because it takes like 135 or so trank darts for 150. And uh, I'm not going to have that. So I think I need to get as many trank darts as I can. And then whatever's left, I would just supplement with my crossbow and trank arrows. Two thousand years later. 
Okay, so we just made it back to base again with another load of metal. And on the way back, it just dawned on me, there is a massive amount of green text at the top of my screen saying that a level up is available, which means we are level 75. So I talked about this last episode. I was pretty sure I was going to get it. Looks like we got it at some point. So I'm just going to dump it in melee damage. And we are going to tab out and unlock a new grid. Okay, so we got all the numbers lined up. I need to adjust the max here to 13 now. And uh, I think the ones that I wish to get remain the same from last episode. So we got the potential for Argents maybe with number 9. And number 12, or maybe even number 1, would potentially push us into the Redwoods. So those two might be alright to get as well. Um, all the rest of them I don't really know. Some of them might be good for beehives, which we're trying to get. So let's just see when the cookie crumbles. Let's give it a shot. One! Okay! So that, that puts us in the Redwoods. That's not bad. I'll take that. So let's hide to one. Let's grab our fancy pantsy selection tool. And this time, we're gonna grab our eraser and just little, little piece by piece. Just like I'm farting. Just little farts. Just creep it out. Just, oh. Oh, there it was. Okay, so back in the game, if we open up the map, that should be the grid that is 65, and then 55, I think, 55, pretty sure that's right, and we'll mark that as 17, and boom, look at that, so that grid might turn out to be super useful, I'm not sure what all falls in there, uh, when we start researching like where the beehives are, we might find that that could be the only place to get them. I'm not sure. I think some spawn over by the Red Obby. So we have the potential to get the ones over there as well. But we've only got like one grid over there. And uh, the only way to get to it would be via ocean. So I don't know how I feel about that. Alright, well that appears to be about the end of our resources there. I'm out of gunpowder now, entirely. So we got 44 simple rifle ammo to work with. And let's see what we got for the Trank Dart. We got 69, so let's make as many more as we can. Um, there is more metal smelting, so right now I'm just kind of playing the waiting game until it's all done. And you know, I'm thinking that this bow, combined with Trank Arrows, is probably going to do more torpor damage than a crossbow would. And I can repair this on the fly. So I think I'm going to ditch the crossbow, I'm going to take the regular bow, and I'll probably take, like a stack or two of fiber just on me and then I can get wood with Athena while I'm out and about and then I can just constantly repair this bow just in case I need to use Trank Arrows on this Diplodocus. And while the rest of that metal smelts up, I think I'm gonna start making some wooden dino gates so that I can just plop them down around the Diplodocus and hopefully I can safely trank it without it like running all over the place or pushing us around or something else trying to kill all of us. Okay, so in this case, I do not want to make the S-plus version of these things. And I'll kind of explain why, but we need to get a little bit of stone on us first. I didn't realize these things took stone. Uh, push up, method! Get down! Get down now! Okay, we should be able to make a couple. So the reason I'm going to make vanilla ones instead of the S-plus is because the S-plus ones try to snap to each other. And whenever you're trying to place these, you really don't want them to snap to each other. You just want to, like, free place them and eyeball where they need to go, because I'm just trying to trap the thing, you know? I'm not trying to, like, build an aesthetic-looking structure. So in this case, I think regular ones are going to do the trick. And if not, I'll just convert them later down the road so I didn't waste my resources. But I think it's the way to go. So I did just accidentally craft S-plus gates which uh, normally wouldn't be a big deal because you can just snap them to the gateways and the gateways was the main thing I was concerned about. But uh, these gates automatically open as soon as you get close to them. And when trying to build a taming pen, you don't want them to do that because you want them to stay closed to trap the thing. Um, and in the case of the Diplodocus, I don't think it matters much because it's so big, I don't think it can fit through it anyways. But uh, for the future, I'm gonna just convert these that way for other stuff that I go to tame, it's already done. There we go. 
Vanilla Gates. Problem solved. Okay, so we got 96 Trank Darts. And I got a bunch of narcotics and stuff here on me that I can make some more Trank Arrows along the way. So uh, if we end up needing more than 55, then I can just craft them on the go and keep shooting the thing. But otherwise, I think that's really all we need. Uh, I'm gonna grab some spikes to put around it. I will grab this double door and foundation. Um, that's, that's honestly probably good. I don't think I'm gonna really need anything else, and if I do, I can just make it on the fly. So let's go get this over with. I'm telling you, this fucking thing's gonna be gone. I went to all this work, and it's gonna be gone. You watch. Okay, we are coming up over the mountain where we just last saw that thing. And I'm hoping that it's still standing here. Diplodocus! Where are you, buddy? I've come to pump you full of narcotics and then shove food in your mouth while you're unconscious. Okay, I remember a stego. And the last... Wait a second, hang on. That's boosted. So that means there's an alpha nearby, right? Oh, there it is! What is it, Alpha Carno? I think it's an Alpha Carno, and it actually looks like it's kind of already dead. Get the trees, please! Get out of my way! Okay, let's look at it. What is it fighting? Is it fighting trikes? I, I think they actually killed it! What the hell? It's so hard to see because of the stupid forest, but... Oh, no, it's still alive! Okay, I think it's an Alpha Raptor. Okay. Well, Athena, you're being called back in, girl. The wood gathering is actually kind of annoying. She gets it at such an efficient rate that it's like... Once you hit a tree, you can't move. See, I'm encumbered. Have you yet encountered Athena, goddess of sex? I think not. But you've met her now, haven't you, Alpha Raptor? Your puny 13 damage is no match for my 260. I know raptors can't do math, but my damage is exponentially higher. Oh, look at that shit, girl. Mmm. Downed it like it was nothing, and also got a ton of fucking wood. I don't want the wood! Okay, what'd we end up getting aside from a bunch of prime? Um... Oh, it's in my inventory. Okay, we got an apprentice crossbow, which is pretty darn good. I mean, the damage isn't crazy, but that actually might end up outdoing this other bow that I got now. I know this one's 178, but the base damage of a crossbow is a lot higher than a regular bow. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull this one out. I'll probably use this one until it breaks and then switch to the other one because I can repair it on the go. And we actually also got a pistol, too, which might be kind of nice because pistol ammo is super cheap. Um, the hide might be useful if I start doing some harvesting on cold mountains, but otherwise I don't know that I would really use this. And the cloth is completely worthless, I'm just actually gonna fucking drop it. But hey, she got two more levels out of that, and it probably got us a bunch of experience. Oh, it actually got us a level! Okay. Well, let's do more melee damage, and that puts us at level 76 now, which is awesome. So if that Alpha Raptor was left to just ravage these woods, that Diplodocus might actually be gone. So I'm gonna scout for a bit to see if I can find it. But they're obviously not too hard to see. So if I don't come across it pretty quick, then I'm gonna make the assumption that it's just gone. Two hours later. Okay, so I circled through all these woods, and I cannot seem to find that Diplodocus. So my best guess is that it either despawned, or that raptor killed it. Because they're not too hard to spot. Um, I came across it pretty easy before. And the fact that I haven't found it already, it, it, I'm thinking that it's probably gone. So, I'm probably gonna cut my losses here. And just head back to base. Or better yet, I might even tab out and look up where I can start to get some honey. Okay, so looking at the map of the island, this is all the places that beehives can spawn. So, if I compare this to the grids that I already have unlocked, I think I certainly have access to some of these. Especially that little cluster right down there to the south. Um, it is rare for them to be there. It's far more common for them to be in the redwoods. 
but maybe I'll check this one since it's so close to base, and if there's none around me here, then maybe I'll head to the Redwoods and try to get it there. Regardless, I need to head back to base, because I'm gonna need bug repellent to do this, and I think I only have like one crafted, so I'll probably make like two or three to take with me, and then we can hopefully set out and accomplish this goal, even though we didn't get to the Plotticus, I still want to accomplish something. I might as well load up on metal while I'm here, because Athena can help me carry a ton more than I would be able to carry by myself. Efficiency. That's what this is, people. Efficiency. Did you know that efficiency is my- Chinese neighbor's middle name. Oh god, she's too fat. Okay, Athena, we gotta lose some metal. It's okay, girl. I know. So one of you guys had recommended that I start to change up some of the music I use in my fast-forward scenes, but given that I use YouTube's royalty-free music, I really don't have that large of a selection. So to accommodate your request, I've decided to write, record, and produce my very own original song just for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. There was a small bunna who searched high and low For an honest young warlock for which he could bestow The mightiest of items of which all mankind knows Its priceless, impeccable, crisp and golden in glow The circle shape defines it, perfection, it's novel The item for which I speak, of course, is a waffle Okay, got my ghillie, got four bug repellent, which I think will be enough. Um, the last thing that I think I'll need is probably rare flowers, um, which I think I have. So I should be good because I saved them from that uh, beaver dam last episode. You can also use raw mutton, uh, cooked lamb, or raw prime. So raw prime is actually a little bit quicker, and I'm going to be taking Athena, so if there's something nearby, I'll kill it for prime and I'll just use it to tame the bee. But if I'm in a pinch, I'm just gonna stick with the rare flowers without hesitation. There's a duck, I just can't not kill it, you know? It's free polymer, I just, I have to take it. You know, something that just dawned on me, uh, don't Therizinos have like a secondary leveling system? Shouldn't I like... Oh my god. Well, maybe I should look up what this does before I invest. I'm thinking power harvesting is what I want, but just real quick, I'm gonna tab out and look it up. Okay, so it says that Delicate improves the gathering from bush slash flower nodes, hide and chitin, and organic polymer. And power improves the gathering from trees and corpses. So, she already gathers so much wood that the, the trees is just obsolete. And same thing as far as the meat goes. Like, she gets so much meat, I don't need any more there. But if we put her points in delicate, and we can get organic polymer from the ducks, that would be fantastic. Okay, decision has been made. We are going to dump it into delicate. And then we're gonna kill this duck, and we're gonna see how much we get. Oh, ducky! Come here, ducky! I only want to murder you! Okay, so it says organic polymer should be gathered with the right mouse button. So, right mouse button. Oh! Oh, I just tickled the shit out of it! Okay, 26 isn't bad! That's pretty good. I mean, I still think a moss chops would probably do a lot better, but this will do in the meantime. So looking at the map, we are currently in beehive territory. So we need to keep our eyes peeled. Also, there's another duck. Oh, I see a beehive, guys. I see a beehive. Okay. All right. I remember I've done this before but I can't quite recall the process. I think I need to destroy the beehive, and then the queen bee will pop out, and then I need to passively tame it with rare flowers. I'm almost positive that's what you do. But just to be on the safe side, I'm once again, I'm gonna tab out, and I'm gonna make sure. Okay, so I think I was correct in how you do this. Um, I just have to be careful, because if I'm on the back of Athena, the bees will like sting me and pull me off of her. So, 
I don't know the best way to do this outside of maybe shooting the hive and then keeping her on neutral so that when the bees come after me, she can just wipe them out for me until the hive is destroyed. So that might be my plan of attack here. All right, fuck it, let's give it a try. Let's pop bug repellent. Let's aim our crossbow probably about right there. Okay, I did some damage. Are any bees gonna come out and play? Maybe, maybe not. Well, so far this is smooth sailing, but I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. So it's got quite a bit of health, but I've got a bunch of arrows and I can always make more if I need more. So I am content with just plinking away. So when I was reading that wiki page, it says that Dimorphodons are really, really good at breaking beehives. Which was something I never knew. So in this case, I I'm not going to tame a Dimorphodon just to do this, because this is working just fine. But just for your knowledge, it's kind of neat to know. You know, I never really thought about it, but I guess you would just whistle attack target, and then it would just wreck the hive, and I guess it does like- Whoa, what? What? Oh, Sarko! Oh, you thought you could do something! That's right! You better fucking run! And don't you come back, you piece of shit! No, you know what? Fuck you, I ain't letting you live! No, you, you, you gon' die! See? I told you you gon' die! Okay, we are down to the last four arrows, I believe. I think it's gonna take either four or five, so... Let's see, guys. I'm really hoping that a queen comes popping out, because if I did all of this for nothing and this thing is bugged out, I'm going to be pretty ticked. Okay, it's gone. Is there a queen? What? What? Okay, well I have no idea why that didn't work, but I guess we'll just keep looking for a hive. I don't know. Well, there's another hive right there. Okay. Oh, wait, what was that? Athena! Why you gotta scare me like that, Athena? Alright, so if I if I shoot this, it's there's no bees? No? Can I just pike it then? I mean better yet, can I just bring Athena up and just like maul the thing? Maybe the uh the queen only comes out of hives that have bees in it, you know? Holy shit! Athena! You're a beast, girl! Okay, nothing. Empty hive. So maybe like the spawns just need reset or something. I don't know. I just wanted a beehive for in my base. Is that too much to ask? Okay, I see another beehive. So it, it's promising, I guess. Although my last experiences haven't been the most profitable, I'm still keeping my hopes high. So let's spyglass this one just to see, is there any difference? Just beehive. And now, so it just says some hives are empty though. If the hive is occupied, a swarm of giant bees will come out and attack the person who damaged it. Okay. So... I should probably stand back, fire an arrow at it, and if bees come after me, then I know it has a queen. All right, well, here goes nothing again. Okay, it's got a queen. Okay, that's a great sign. Um, so I can certainly do the other strategy I did where I just keep shooting the thing with arrows. Uh, but the damage she does is fucking crazy. So I'm wondering if I can't just sick her on this and have her just wipe it out. Can I do that? I'm gonna try it. Let's Let's aim at it. Let's do whistle attack this target. Will you get that, Athena? Please don't die. Okay, I'm gonna pop bug repellent because I need to. Can you damage it? Maybe not. Okay. If I mount you, can I damage it? 
This is dangerous, I realize this. But it's for the sake of saving so much time. Come on, Athena. Come on, girl. You're not gonna do it, are ya? Okay, what if we get up above? Can I just, like... Can I get it from here? That's something I can do. Can I drop down slowly? Come on. Come on, take the claws. Oh, oh take my claws. I could probably put, like, a little foundation or something there and build up to it, right? Okay, this might be enough. I don't know if she can climb up this or not. Yes, she can. Okay, so let's ditch the stuff that we don't need just to lighten the load in case we get pulled off and we gotta run or something. I don't know how this is gonna go. I wanna say this up front, okay? She'll be fine. I feel okay for her safety, but my safety is in question. So, we gonna smack and we gonna back. You know what I'm saying? And we're just gonna keep on swinging because they're gonna come at us and I'm hoping that she can just wipe them out. Uh-huh. You got this, Athena. You got this. There it is. There's the queen. Okay. All right. So let's... I got pulled off, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm good. She's wiping them out. See? She'll be fine. They'll do, like, no damage to her. It's me I'm concerned about. So I've got bugger pellet running. Let me get rare flowers on the last slot of my hotbar. And we're going to go up here and try to tame this queen. Okay, where'd you go, Queen Bee? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay. All right. So we need to get in first person, I think. And come on up and tame her. Yes! Woo! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Look at that. Let's, uh, let's whistle all to stop. These things will go away. Uh, I don't get to keep these bees. I just get to keep her. And I get to obtain beehive. Boom! Look at that, people. We got ourselves a beehive. All right. We did it, people. Let's head back to base. And we can hopefully turn this into the domesticated beehive. Uh, I'm not even sure if I have the stuff currently to do it. I just know that I needed a beehive in order to, like, progress towards accomplishing it. So let's head back to base and we'll see what we got. Two hours later. Alrighty, we made it back to base, safe and sound. Still got the beehive on me, so nothing bad happened. Let's come on inside here and let's look up beehive. I might have already learned it. No, I did not because it's level 70. So in order to make this, we actually don't even need a beehive at all. Fuck me. It's all good, though, because we technically kind of did need a beehive. Um, it takes 50 giant bee honey in order to make this domesticated beehive. And uh, I don't think I'd have a good way of getting that if I didn't get a beehive of my own. So the only difference between this one and the one that I have on me right now is that when I access this one, it will damage me. Because the bees will think I'm an attacker and they'll, like, they'll get all over me and try to hurt me. And the domesticated beehive doesn't do that. So it's kind of like a tame hive, and when you access it, they won't hurt you. So ultimately, this is the one that I want, but the one that I have is perfectly capable of making me honey. Um, I'll just have to make this one in the future. And I don't even need a hive to make this one, so I can just kind of back burner this for the time being, and use the honey that this hive that I got uh, produces in order to make the domesticated version. So I want to put this thing inside of my greenhouse, but I don't know if you place this down if they attack you in the vicinity. They might. I'm not positive about it. And I don't want to, like, screw myself over if I put it inside here and then it, like, damages me through the walls and stuff. So I will probably place it maybe over here or something, kind of far away. And, uh, and we'll see if that works instead. So I'm going to place it down. And it doesn't seem to be damaging me right now. If I open it up, it might. Yeah, so it did damage me a little bit there, you can see. It doesn't do continuous damage, though. So I should be okay. I'm going to pick this up if I can. I think... I think I can demolish it. 
I'm pretty sure if I demolish it, it gives me it back. But you know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'm not going to. I'm just going to open it up and put rare flowers in there so that it can start producing honey. And then I'll just get 50 honey, make the domesticated one, and put that one inside my greenhouse. And then basically just demolish this one because I won't need it anymore. Okay, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give me a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please keep leaving me all of your awesome comments because they warm my little bun of heart. And they cheer me up. And they're what's keeping this channel pumping so much. I, I love reading them, and I love the interaction you guys are having with each other. Um, a lot of you are, like, commenting on each other's comments and, and liking them and throwing in tips and feedback to, like, one another and stuff. And you're really giving me a lot of info that's helping me out, truly. Like, I've played ARK for years, but as you guys have seen, I suck. And there's a lot of stuff that you need to remember that I just can't. And so, uh, when you guys leave me feedback and stuff, it kind of, like, reminds me about things that I once knew, or I never knew, and it just reminds me that I can do that again. So thank you guys so much again for watching, and I will see you next time!